Chuck, welcome to the show. It's good to see you. And uh, I miss your booming voice, your soothing voice uh, when we were at the uh, the breath uh, retreat in Costa Rica. Well, where, where do we find you today? I'm in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas today, just outside you of Sacramento in a little town called Jackson. Jackson, beautiful area, the foothills, the gold country, right? Yes. Gold because of the hills and the color it turns in summertime. That's right. That's right. Um, thank you for being on the show. Uh, I think a lot of viewers, listeners are wondering, why are we going to be talking about, you know, based on my intro um, and, and description of your bio, why are we going to be talking about Wim Hof breathing? Why are we talking to a breath coach, someone, an expert on breathing? And we, we both are sitting here going, yeah, why not? Uh, it's so important. Um, I went to the breath resort, uh, for the main reason my, my driver there was, I'm always looking for something else. I know that breathing is important. I read the book breath. I spoke with James Nestor. I also wanted to meet him because we, we were talking back and forth for a long time. We were interviewing each other. Uh, he interviewed me for the book, of course. So I have known him for four or five years. So it was great to meet him. Probably the best, best, other part of the retreat was meeting you, um, but but it's important to me, and I see the body as this big integral, biological, multi-organism, you know, uh, entity. Uh, in considering biomes, of course, microbiomes, uh, and I'm always wondering what can we do to make it better. And I had a notion that breathing was important when I came out of that uh, retreat. I was really blown away. And again, I'm a credentialed medical professional. I've had training, which can be good and bad, can be very uh, limiting in many, many ways. Um, and so, yeah, I want to talk about breathing, how it can help us systemically. Of course, there's this oral systemic connection that can help us by a, a oral, uh, you know, with oral health as well. We're going to talk about mouth breathing. Uh, we're going to talk about sympathetic and parasympathetic tone, how that's important for sleeping. Uh, a lot of my Followers are dentists and they are very much into sleep as it should be. That's what functional dentistry does. Any dentist not practicing uh, sleep dental medicine is practicing below the standard of care. We can see it before physicians can. So, so yeah, welcome to the show. And uh, I don't know where you want to start. It's a big, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, let's start with your story about how you got into breathing. How? Well, so my master's degree is in theater. Uh, f with an emphasis in audio engineering and acting. And we do a lot of voice coaching there. Um, when I was young, I was told every emotion has a breath. And it took me 20 years to realize I don't have to be on stage to use that exercise. Mm. Um, I was I was bartending. I'd been a bartender for about 15 years. And I'd been diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic due to an autoimmune reaction to an overexposure to mold, which they basically went, we don't know why you're diabetic. You are now. Good luck. And it's like, oh, that's wow. awesome. Um, I've been in multiple car accidents, um, multiple motorcycle accidents, and not not a small amount of physical altercations because drunk people aren't too happy when you have to tell them no. Right. And I was just kind of subsisting. I was existing. I was paying my bills. I was living. And one night, one of my customers came in and he was overly intoxicated and he would not stop talking about breath. And the only way I could get him to go home is if I promised to watch a Wim Hof documentary, the vice one. Wow. I watched it. I breathed along to it and I slept like the dead. Now I'd like to say I slept like a baby, but I didn't wake up every two hours angry and hungry. So I, <laughs> I, I, I slept like the dead with colic. <laughs> yeah. I, I woke up in the morning and I, I told my wife about it and the original 10 week course, this is back in 2016 was on sale from the Wim Hof method. And I just went for it. And I was suddenly not taking, well, not suddenly, it took three and a half to six months to really feel and see the changes. I was able to stop taking my blood pressure medication and I'm still not back on it. I um, was able to stop taking, I had been prescribed Valium for the mood swings that the diabetes was, was bringing me when I was first going to it. It was hard to control my mood. Um, I was being afflicted with diabetic induced depression which is something that I was like, whoa, that's a thing now. And I didn't have to pay any extra. I didn't have to learn anything else besides just modulating how I breathe. And with the background in theater, I just saw the quality of my life improve. And for, as you were talking, different biomes, my dentist saw my teeth improve. 
And he's like, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. And what I did was stop breathing through my mouth. Right. I started applying the things I learned in theater. How are we supposed to breathe? What's the optimal way for the body to move? Why aren't we doing that? And usually it's pain and stress. If people have noticed the whole time I've been sitting here, I've been trying to sit back and stay in proper posture, but you'll notice we kind of use our chairs like stools and we hunch over. But when we do that, if you were to see me sitting like this, it doesn't look like I'm having a good day. This isn't, this isn't good posture. So if you sit back, just that simple move tells your body you're a little safer. You're a little more comfortable. You're not stressed out because you're not in a stressed out posture. So it's not just breath. It's posture, tongue positioning. Is my jaw relaxed? Am I clenching my teeth because I'm stressed out? All these little things are factors in how we breathe. And if you start to get stressed out, you can be in the most calm mood ever, but you start to get stressed out and you clench up and you go forward. This is not comfortable. And this is where most of us are in that shallow throughout the day. So open your hands, let the tension go, sit back and use your chair. And you can feel the body just downregulate. And it, it's little tricks like that, that, that have just kept me interested in this world. Being able to, okay, so where am I at? Being honest with the fact that I may be a little stressed out. That took time because I, I was, oh, I'm not stressed. I'm fine. Well, actually I am a little stressed. And what can I do in that situation? If I'm, if I'm in a group of people, I can't suddenly be like, wait, I need to do a 20 minute breathwork exercise right now, guys, because <laughs> I'm feeling a little stressed. I wish that was the world we lived in, but it's right. not, no. we can't do that. So uh, there's a few things you can do. Like Andrew Huberman has really brought a lot of attention to the, the double inhale, like the intentional side. That's great, but that's a break. It's, it's just a break for the nervous system. What are you going to do after that? Right. So it's, it's just all these little accumulations of tips and tricks and tools that, that really ignite my brain and, and right. make me want to keep pursuing this. So you've touched on a few things that I think are important. Uh, I want to talk about them both. We're going to talk later about solutions, posture, even tongue posture. Uh, the big ones are we spend most of our time driving and sitting at a desk. I want to talk about that. But back to what you brought up about mouth breathing, uh, that's a big issue in oral health. Um, a, a lot of my followers are are well uh, well educated about that and, and for good reason. Uh, they don't want oral disease. I mean, they don't want to have to pay a periodontist uh, for gum surgery and and even for their kids or for themselves as adults, uh, pay thousands of dollars for quadrants of fixing cavities and, and doing fillings. So, so, and then also I want to talk about sleep. So let's talk about the whole uh, mouth breathing thing first. Um, and there's also that sympathetic tone that you get with mouth breathing, shallow breathing. So you, you spoke, you, you spoke to that, uh, uh, drunk patron, right? He was a customer, right? And he ironically was the one who told you about Wim Hof. How does, how would the Wim Hof method describe that a little bit? Not everyone's aware of Wim Hof, but they should be. And how breathing can actually help you become less of a mouth breather, more of a nose breather. Um, and then, and that's for people that can nose breathe. And then there's that subgroup of people. This is a complex compound question. Sorry, I'll, I'll review it all again. Uh, and then, and then there's that group of people that I deal with a lot that can mouth tape at night. They can breathe through their nose, but it's a wild night. In other words, they're tossing and turning because they can't get enough of air through their nose. So how does, how does breathing help you breathe properly for, uh, so that you don't mouth breathe during the day at night, certainly. Excuse me. So mouth breathing is usually done because it's easy. Now the body doesn't look for optimum. It looks for easy. Mm -hmm. So if you're stressed out and you clench your teeth, I mean, if you, if you're totally relaxed and for everyone out there, I want you to take a breath in through your nose for four seconds. Four, let it out nice and slow. Two, three, four, five, six. Your body should feel a little bit calmer. 
And so you're in a nice calm state and say you get an email you don't like. You're sitting at your desk, you're driving and someone cuts you off and you clench your teeth. Watch my shoulders. I'm not going to move them consciously, but if I clench my teeth, my shoulders start to move. My breath is already restrained because my, my chest is tightening and I'm already breathing shallowly even if I am trying to breathe through my nose. So this, this unconscious tension we hold because of the stress we have really forces us to take that shallow breath. So if, if they can't breathe through their nose and, and tape at night, how about we try, you know, maybe an hour before bed to see if you can breathe through your nose comfortably. Maybe, maybe tape. And you know, some people like to tape just like this. Now I can't tape just like this because my wife will stab me in my sleep because if I do <laughs> my lips, do that weird noise and right. no one can sleep. So I have to right. tape my whole mouth. Now there's myo tape, which sits around the mouth. That can be awesome. I have a goatee. It doesn't work as good as I'd like it to for that, but it's an amazing product. Now for something like the Wim Hof method, I kind of consider that to be the gym for my breath. That's something I do 20 minutes a day, maybe a little less 15 to 20 minutes. And that helps balance my nervous system. The Wim Hof method is 30 to 40 breaths. It doesn't matter if you're breathing nose or mouth for that. If you breathe through your mouth, you're going to have the biggest effect on your body in and out through the nose is the least amount of stress, but it's still steady. You're relaxing your breath to neutral. So it doesn't train the exhale of the diaphragm. And after that, you just relax, <sighs> hold your breath for as long as you can. When you need to breathe again, take a breath in for 10 to 15 seconds. Hold that at the, well, the breath isn't 10 to 15 seconds. You breathe in hold 10 to 15 seconds and repeat that three to five times. Um, it's a great way to balance the nervous system, but that's not for everybody. If you're epileptic, it, it could lead you into a seizure. If you have high blood pressure, it's going to raise your blood pressure. So there's a lot of things you should, you know, take stock of before we jump into something like the Wim Hof method. But as it goes for autoimmune diseases, and, and you know, stress and anxiety, I do feel the Wim Hof method is one of the best methods on the planet to address those things, but that's only for 20 minutes a day. What are you doing for the other 23 hours and 40 minutes of your day? And if I have time, I'd love to show people how we're supposed to be breathing. Oh, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. So most of us through one thing, or another say, why, why do I need to pay attention to breath? I'm breathing just fine. Mm -hmm. I want you all to think about that person who says, I'm just a fine cook. Now, do you want to eat just fine food? Or do you want to eat food by someone who really knows what they're doing in the kitchen? And yeah, okay, you're breathing just fine. But it could be better. And we we watch the water we drink, the food we eat, the stimulus we, we you know, g give into, what we pay our attention to. But the breath is the frontline messenger to all of that. It tells your body before even you think about it how you're supposed to be feeling. When you breathe through your mouth, you're telling your body that you want to be in the top one to two percentile of human output. You're breathing faster than you metabolically need. You're off gassing more carbon dioxide. So your veins and arteries constrict and your blood pressure goes up. Blood pressure is the number one um, thing I think about when I think about life longevity. So if I'm mouth breathing, I am shortening my life. I'm bringing more stress into the body. So if something goes wrong, the walls are already right here because I'm telling my body I'm already stressed out. I've had too many head injuries. I can't have the walls right here. I need to push them out as far as I can. So you want a lateral expansion of the lower ribs. So when you breathe in, you can put your thumbs behind your lower ribs. You want your ribs to push your hands apart. Practice that. The second part of that is what is your rib cage doing? So I like to touch my middle fingers together put my index fingers right beneath my collarbone, relax. You can even push with this part of your hand into the side of your pecs. And as you breathe in, you want to see your fingers come apart like so. Your rib cage is exactly that. It is a cage. And if it's coming up like this, how most of us are breathing, it's not dynamic. It's going up. It's causing tension. Your neck is engaging to lift the rib cage. It's causing stress on the jaw, which is bad for oral health. Yeah. People that um, brush their teeth, that grind their teeth tend to breathe like this. 
and they're a little forward hunched, so you can't open up the chest. And so to open up the chest, every inch my head is forward is eight pounds of pressure on my back. Oh, wow. So tongue to the roof of the mouth and watch the first thing that opens up is my rib cage. If my head comes down even an inch and I'm looking at my phone, your rib cage rocks and your diaphragm moves. This is subpar. So simply by doing this, we're out of optimum. And if we're, we're driving, we're way out of optimum. This is not how my body should look. So find a way to get your seat there and use your seat so that you can be well supported. So I like to keep my neck relaxed when I breathe. Everyone should be keeping their neck relaxed. We don't need these muscles to flare. And all you have to do is bend your hand like this. Put your index finger at the center of your throat. Let these two fingers sit on the side. And as you breathe, keep your neck soft. Tongue to the roof of the mouth. And this is one of my favorite exercises is you smile big, eyebrows up and swallow. And you should notice your tongue going to the top of your mouth. Now, there's, there's a lot about tongue posture. We could talk for hours just in how we're supposed to sit it up there. But you have a piece of fascia, which is the sausage-like casing around your muscles that goes from your tongue to the tips of your toes. If your tongue is at the roof of your mouth, it makes it easier for your body to sit in proper posture. You want your ears back over your shoulder blades. And if everyone's sitting at their desk or at their cars or, or you're watching this on your phone, bring your phone up a little bit and, and get it straight. But if you're relaxed here, just place the palms forward and your shoulders will rock back. And from here, you can take that nice deep breath, allowing the rib cage to open, the diaphragm to descend, giving the lungs the most room possible to inflate. And when you slow that down and your respiratory rate slows down and you're breathing in and out through the nose, we hold a higher saturation of carbon dioxide in the body, which causes our veins and arteries to dilate, our heart rate to drop. By breathing through the nose, we also get nasal um, introduced nitric oxide, Nitric oxide is antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, and it's a vasodilator. So if you're breathing through your mouth, you're losing most of that. And you're drying your teeth out. You're, you're like, if you wake up in the morning and it's pasty, you're probably breathing through your mouth when you sleep. And to address your question about sympathetic tone, rest is supposed to be a parasympathetic act. Mm -hmm. If you are breathing through your mouth while resting, that is not a parasympathetic state. You're telling your body... Something's going on. I need to be alert. So you're not really entering as deep and restful sleep as you can. Right. And for those who, you know, tape their mouth and it's just not right, maybe try practicing nasal breathing with, with a breathwork instructor. Uh, maybe you have a deviated septum. Something may be going on there that needs to be addressed. But if you can breathe through your nose for five or ten minutes and not feel a lot of pressure and a lot of stress, you can help it out. And it, a lot of people stumble at speed. So I've been hit in the face because of the bar work. And if I breathe quickly, you can hear the obstruction. Mm -hmm. But if I slow it down, there's no obstruction. So if I'm trying to breathe quickly, I'm going to cause a lot of havoc up there. But if I can slow my breath down, hmm. That's one of the advantages of nose breathing. It really, it slows down the the volume and the velocity of the air going past this little constriction. You pull a lot of air through that, it's gonna suck the tube closed. Uh, and that's why I think mouth taping, if you can mouth tape at night, I mean, why not do this seven hours a day while you're sleeping? It's a no brainer. It takes two seconds to put tape on your lips. Uh, even if you can breathe your nose, which I can, I still find that my mouth falls open. So I always tape every single night. My wife does as well. Huge improvements in sympathetic tone as opposed to parasympathetic tone, relaxation. I mean, I, I can test for this at home. I've got all sorts of testing equipment, sleep testing equipment, respiratory rate goes down, resting heart rate goes down, HRV scores go up if that mouth is closed for seven hours. And then not to mention what you mentioned, certainly if your mouth is open most of the night, your mouth will be very dry, your oral microbiome will be affected, the pH of the mouth is affected in such a way that you're more likely to have oral disease, oral health issues, uh, and that's related to dysbiosis of the oral microbiome. So, 
So, so, so you're obviously a proponent of breathing properly during the day, nose breathing as opposed to mouth breathing. What about those cases where, and I'm sure you see this with a lot of your customers, your patients. Um, what about those people that do have a slight obstruction, whether due to allergy, maybe one side has a polyp or there's a deviation and only one nostril is fully online. Uh, uh, I mean, there are a host of reasons. I mean, there's so much air pollution now and crap in the air that uh, most of us are congested. There are food allergies, uh, immune response to our environment that creates this histaminic response, the swelling of all the mu mucosal tissues in the mouth as well, not just the nose. So, so how would you, and, and I mean, I know what the answer is, but I'm not sure what, how you would approach it. I know that if you can force the issue a little bit and get them to breathe through your nose, that when the nose comes online and you start using it, they're going to be physiological anatomical changes, actually more physiological, more mucosal changes, uh, and you'll be able to breathe better. So how would you approach that patient? Percentage, percentage wise. I, if I say right now, like this is my favorite thing that happens is I tell people, I want you to be nasal breathers. I want you to mm -hmm. be nasal breathers when you exercise and then they'll go out and try and run. And like, I couldn't do it. I'm like, right. Can you walk and nasal breathe? So we start small. Think of it as a game of percentages. If you're mouth breathing a hundred percent of the day, man, can we get you to 5% nasal breathe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the muscle isn't, or the nose is a muscle. Um, if, if it's not used correctly, it does atrophy a little bit. I mean, it's right. still there. It's not like it just sags and falls right. off, right. but you get more inflamed. The tissues swell. Mm -hmm. So by practicing nasal breathing, you know, just, I set an alarm on my phone that goes off five times a day. And it reminds me to check my posture, check my breath, put everything the way it's supposed to go because of my head injuries, I may forget to do that. And this is my job. Mm -hmm. So start small. Can you just sit down and relax and lay down and breathe through your nose for 10 or 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Give yourself the time to do that and consider that just a little bit of respiratory exercise. And, you know, practice breathing all the way in, expanding everything. Because it's not this breath I want to pe see people see when they na nasal breathe. We're, don't do that. You want the lateral expansion of the lower ribs and upper ribs. And if you were to imagine yourself standing in the center of a compass, you've got, you know, north, south, east, and west. I want you to add four more arrows and get the diagonals. And as you breathe in, just imagine you're hitting every arrow as you expand your body. So instead of going up and missing them, you take a nice, big, expansive breath light up all the arrows and you can even do something like coherent breathing which is breathing in for the same amount of time you're breathing out it's the best exercise for heart rate variability it's four and a half seconds to seven seconds in or out my personal sweet spot is six seconds uh, so you're breathing five breaths a minute when you do that practice that it's just slow it down the average person is taking 15 to 20 breaths every minute and they're just telling the body we're in trouble, we're in danger, we're stressed out. And this is before work comes in. So think of it as a game of percentages. This week, I want to aim for 5%. In two weeks, at your own pace, maybe let's go for 10. Are we at a point where, you know, we've worked well enough with some of these exercises that Oxygen Advantage has a lot of to help retrain and, you know, restabilize your nasal cavity and your diaphragm? Mm -hmm. Let's tape your mouth now, if you can. Now, there, there's a side to taping that a lot of people don't talk about, but I want people to know is there, is if your CO2 threshold isn't where it should be, mouth taping for the first couple nights can be a little scary. You will but hit your explain, CO2 threshold. Explain CO2, CO2 threshold. That's very important. So your amygdala is the fear governor mm -hmm. for your body. Right. When, when something scares you, your amygdala fires and you go, ooh, scary. That's where fear comes from. Now, CO2 bypasses the amygdala. There is no conscious, okay, I should be afraid of that. When your body hits its CO2 threshold and email apnea is a thing that's sweeping over the country. So if you notice in the morning, you're checking your email and you stop breathing, your CO2 threshold looks like this. <clears throat> Where you kind of jump and shake and you're like, what's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. And you feel like you're out of breath. Now, it, it, you can have an appropriate amount of O2 in your body. You're fine on oxygen. You've just hit your CO2 threshold. 
And working on that isn't the most comfortable exercise. Um, mm -hmm. Oxygen Advantage suggests using Breathe Light, where you're just constantly get, as Patrick McEwen would say, that teaspoon of air hunger. You're breathing low and slow mm -hmm. and deep, so slow the fine hairs in your nose don't move. If someone was to put a feather underneath your nose, it wouldn't be disturbed as you breathe. That's the concept. That's really hard to do. And you slow it down and you, you sit with that air hunger and you, you kind of push that CO2 threshold. The amount of carbon dioxide in your body is what tells your body it's time to breathe. Breathe, right. It's not it's, O2. It's yep. not O2. It's your, right. your, your resistance to carbon dioxide. So working that CO2 threshold is going to drop your respiratory rate, which will help lower your blood pressure, lower your right. resting heart rate. Help and with that. prevent snoring. I mean, yeah, because you're you're how much air you're pulling in at the rate you're pulling in and how much you're pulling in that'll change a lot. That's a tough threshold to convince a patient to to change. Although by forcing the, the simple way to do it, and I always try and do simple. It doesn't always work. We can go complex, and I have a lot of engineers who are patients and explaining them the mechanism is important, which I totally get. Um, but by forcing the issue uh, and be, breathe through your nose, automatically you can't overbreathe CO2. Where with the mouth, it's it, it's it's the worst way you can breathe. And I, it's funny, it's ironic that with your mouth open, you breathe, you think you're breathing better and more, but more is not better in this case because then your breathing becomes very shallow. And then it's very hard for you to nose breathe because you're so wound up and you need to take those breaths. So that's where that air hunger comes into, into play. Uh, describe air hunger for our listeners. Well, I can describe it how I feel it, but the yep. easiest way to feel air hunger is just to take a breath in, mm -hmm. let it go, and just hold your breath. You're going to get that that first inclination to breathe, mm -hmm. and you can push past that one. Right, exactly. But it's that, that I need to breathe, I want to take a breath in, and you, you've seen people go, <gasps> they've pushed too far. We mm -hmm. don't want you to be that right. star for air. But it, right. once you start to get that feeling right about here in your chest that you need to breathe, your body's going to want to tighten. For those of you who have asthma or anxiety, you're probably very familiar with this sensation. And we keep the body relaxed around it as part of the exercise. And there's multiple ways to do breathe light. You can do um, box breathing, mm -hmm. which if you're doing... Uh, say seven seconds for your box that's a 28 second breath that's two breaths a minute right you might feel at the end of the hold that oh i need to breathe more i need to breathe more but can you calmly take that breath in we're looking for the air hunger that you can stay calm in not the one where you're like this sucks and it's it's just that tightness of the chest and realizing that you can stay calm and relaxed around that. I don't need to <gasps> and let that kind of manic panic find me. So that the air hunger is, is an interesting thing to familiarize yourself with. Mm -hmm. And you can breathe less. You can take a shallower breath, still activating the diaphragm, but not breathing in all the way. Just say about 50%. And, and cultivate that air hunger. Um, for breath holds, for the Wim Hof method, if people want to go longer, you can do something called air sipping, where your mouth is closed, your diaphragm pops a little bit, you're taking a short breath in through the nose like this, and staying at neutral. So it's, it's all about finding that way where you can approach that discomfort as comfortably as possible and in a way that's most, you know, reasonable for the person. Everyone's got a different CO2 threshold. Everyone's got a different, you know, nasal passage. So, I mean, if you have a fully deviated septum polyps, massive inflammation, mm -hmm. yep. you've got to go see an ENT. Right. You've got to go see someone who's like, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to be operating on your nose. Um, there are other breath workers out there. They're like, try this essential oil. <laughs> I am hands off with that. Like, I am not oh, going to do that. Definitely. Um, Ten so, foot pole. Yeah, at this point, I love to say breath work is one of the best in addition to practices we can cultivate. Right. It'll help your, your, your mouth biome. It'll help keep your teeth healthier, which in turn helps keep your stomach healthier, which in turn will help keep your heart and mind healthier. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do 
is close the mouth. Right. Uh, at the breath retreat, it was uh, very empowering for me. Uh, I could hold my breath for about a minute and within an hour, I think it was the box breathing session, um, I was able to hold my breath for three minutes. And I think that's one of those moments in one's healthcare kind of journey. It's like maybe losing those first 10 pounds or even two pounds, knowing that you can do it. It can be, it can be so many things. It can be making the right choices. Uh, it can be improving your VO2 max and, and understanding that it can be done. Uh, that gives people hope. Um, explain in a nutshell, you know, you know, dummies 101, box breathing, Give us a simple exercise that we can all take home that would just take a few minutes. Like I, I, f a four box breathing, simple because it's four, four, and four, and four, and then aim for a six, 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 six. Um, and what, what, give us a quick tutorial on that. And then what should we expect and when? No pressure. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm going to go back to the one breath break or the intentional sigh. Mm -hmm. as, as one of the best tools that we have in our toolbox to stop where we're at and, and give us the ability to shift. And that's, that's simply a nice, slow breath in, activating the diaphragm. And when I'm at the second part here, I like to really open the rib cage up. And as you let go, you sigh. And let that tension go. I like to do this in, in pairs of pairs of three and sets of three, however you mm -hmm. want to say it. Someone right. out there is going to say a pair is two. All right. Sets of three for, for all of you really meticulous people. <sighs> Relax the body. And then from here, box breathing is a scale. And I can tip the scale in either direction. I can use it to relax my body or I can use it to energize my body. And this is one of the few times you'll ever hear me say intention is key here. Box breathing was the breath work that really blew my mind that intention is the key. Mm -hmm. So if I want to relax and I'm doing in four, hold four, out four, and hold four, that's the box. It's also called square breathing. It's the same thing if anyone out there is researching it. You can practice your biomechanics while you're doing this. In for four seconds. Hold for four seconds and relax. As you exhale, make some noise and hold and back in again and hold out nice and slow and hold. And if you keep doing this, the relaxation will just, I mean, there's points where you'd be like, where am I at? What am I doing? Perfect. You're doing it right. Awesome. Now, if you want to use it like I've seen the Navy SEALs do and to prep themselves for something else, um, usually what they say is combat. Uh, I've never been in combat, so I wouldn't know. But I've watched them do it. And whereas you were watching my body relax, they don't do it like that. They do it like this. <sighs> And they build that tension. They hold that energy instead of letting it go and just relaxing. They're containing it. They're building it. And, and by the end, you've got, whew, you're ready to go. And at that point, I'd suggest falling into a nasal breath, whether you're going up or down, modulating your breath afterwards is important. Uh, another exercise you can do, set the alarm on your phone. It's my favorite. It's called stress venting. Stand in good posture. Feet, hips width apart. Shoulders back. Head up holding a wide view. In fact, wiggle your fingers by your, your peripheral vision to hold as wide a view as you can. Breathe in for four seconds, out for six seconds through the mouth. Smile big, eyebrows up, so your tongue's up high. And I'll count off. We'll take five breaths. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. Slowing it down, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, 
six, two more, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna stretch at the top of this one. In, two, three, four, stretch, hold it and let it out and just, two, three, four, five, six. Parasympathetic and sympathetic are states in your nervous system. By breathing a certain way, you're just pushing the needle one way or the other. An exhale that is one and a half times longer than the inhale is a parasympathetic exhale. Mm -hmm. no. So breathing in for four, out for six is nice and slow. That's six breaths a minute. It tells your body to relax and that you're okay. So if anything, if, if for anything out there, just lengthen the exhale, close your mouth and just lengthen the exhale. And if you can't breathe out nice and slow through your nose, which a lot of us in the beginning have trouble with, it's just, and they're done. Purse your lips like you're breathing through a straw. You'll find you can hit those longer exhales. Now that's not how we want to breathe optimally, but it's a great tool to get you there. But optimally you would like on the box breathing for all the air to come in and out of the nose. For all breathing, I'd like right. it to come in and okay, out through good. the nose. Okay. I think uh, as you... a lot of people are watching you and you're speaking and the, which is difficult to do and breathe, but you can do it. Uh, but ideally you want you, it's as important to pull air in as it is to push air out of the nose. Cause that Absolutely. really brings the nose online. Well, and it, 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 it helps slows CO2 it down. levels as well. Yeah. And it so, slows things down. Right. So if I want a nice slow respiratory rate, we can just, I'm not going to try and, and do much, you know, shifting to my respiratory rate, but if I'm mouth breathing, I can already feel my mouth drying out. I can feel my throat drying out. And if you're public speaking, this is going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, like I have water right here because I don't like that feeling. But now we're nasal breathing, but with a mouth exhale. I can still feel my mouth drying out. And when you breathe out through the nose, you gain back a lot of the moisture. You're going to mm -hmm. dehydrate slower because mm -hmm. your, your nasal passage is claiming it back. And now if we watch a nasal inhale and exhale, the pace is, is greatly reduced without me having to do anything. And you noticed as I was breathing in, my nostrils were collapsing a little bit. I'm breathing a little faster than I should. So slow that down even more. And I can already feel my body letting go of some of the tension in my ribs. My shoulders are starting to relax a little more. So it's, it's so vital that it's not just in through the nose, out through the mouth. I mean, if you're in the like 95 to 98th percentile of athletic output, that's totally necessary. Mm -hmm. But unless you're there, why are you breathing like you need to be go, go, go? Mouth mm -hmm. breathing is the top 2% of, of athletic output for your body. So if you're sitting at your desk, driving in a car and you're mouth breathing, your body's like, all right, we've got to be up top, top tier. What are we? I don't see anything here that would, yeah. I mean, now if you're a cage fighter, you're an MMA fighter or you're, you're a sprinter, <laughs> I've seen them sometimes switch to mouth breathing, right. but that comes at the cost of endurance. Yeah. So you can get that full output, but it's only for so long. I emergency, like thinking... emergency breathing. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And we forget that. And so Patrick McKeon, who we, we both admire a lot, um, and you're trained by him, uh, right? You have a yes. certification from him. Um, he has a video, which I'll include in the show notes on how in a matter of minutes, and it's an exercise on how to increase the amount of nitric oxide production. Again, as you said, it's that NO gas, it's the nitric oxide gas. It's a very fleeting, short-lived gas. But if you can increase that, that's actually going to open up some of your nasal passages so that you can be a better box breather, change that shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic tone. That's what you need to do. You need to utilize all these different aspects so that you can breathe better and then learn how to do that. So what I recommend to my patients is do the box breathing three times a day, 
uh, take take a post-it and stick it on the windshield, uh, your computer at work. Don't have to write anything on it. That post-it basically, every time you see it, check in. Is your mouth closed? Try and force the nose breathing during the day. Mouth taping at night, assuming that you can mouth tape. And there are some ways to check for three minutes in a rest position. If you can mouth tape, it's safe. There's uh, Unless you're a child. Uh, for adults, it's fine. But if you keep forcing the issue, learn how to do it, make it a habit, do the box breathing, the exercises during the day, uh, this nose will literally come online, do Patrick's exercise. Yes. Um, and then, and what I mean by nose online is just for, as an example, the nose has this super highway of mucosa uh, and it's being uh, uh, transported by these little cilia and ironically, and I'm not sure why, but they beat it about 16 times per minute, which is very close to a respiratory rate. Is there a connection there or not? I don't know. But but if there's no mucosa or if it's too sticky and thick because it's so dry, because you're not pulling in air and pushing out air, that super highway of getting rid of toxins when you breathe them in, pushes them back out, that will not be active. And that's such a pity, especially with COVID and future pandemics, uh, air pollution, um, talk, there's a lot of air pollution. I mean, we both live in California. We've got uh, fire, smoke. Uh, talk about how breathing during, if you live in a, in a polluted area or if even New York, my middle daughter lives in New York and she was like, dad, this is, this is just like living in California. They had a bad time earlier this summer. How should you breathe as you're walking around in a polluted area and in a big city, diesel buses, uh, fire, fire smoke. What is there something someone can do to prevent take, taking in and all those toxins? Well, a mask can help uh, to, to filter out all the, the heavy particles mm -hmm. in the air. If you're really worried about pollution during the fires, there was so much ash coming mm -hmm. down last year. I was wearing a mask to prevent myself from breathing the the larger part particulates right, right. um and, and when people are wearing a mask they tend to <sighs> yeah no let's talk still, about that how to breathe laser. properly with a mask because masks are still i know this is controversial and we're gonna piss off some people here but masks are are a good thing to know how to use properly at times when you put on a mask chuck how do you breathe what's the best way to breathe because remember you're not, when you're expelling a lot of air you're not able to clear it completely. That mask is preventing that. And there's some CO2 buildup behind the mask. There is, I think of it as free CO2 training. It's so yep. minimal when it's there. It's right. not It's not enough to like really change your body chemistry. There were a lot of people being like, I'm measuring this thing and it's totally I'm like, yeah, but you're forgetting as you're breathing in through your more air is coming in through the mask. It's, you know, you want something, if you're using it to just you know, stop a lot of the pollution. You don't need like the KN95s. You're not, it's not an antiviral thing. Right. Um, something that- large yeah, particles, yeah. You, you want something that creates a nice seal and you want to breathe in and out through the nose with that proper posture. And these shallow breaths, mm -hmm. those are your worst enemy because exactly. you're not clearing anything from the mask. You want to right. breathe nice, slow and deep and exhale as well to clear it out. So if why is it that people find it more difficult to breathe properly with a mask on? Their breathing goes to pot with a mask on. I wish I had an answer for that. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just that that something is on their face and it's different. And mm -hmm. that different is, is I, I liken it to people thinking about how you're walking. Mm -hmm. So most people walk just fine. But if I'm like, I want you to think about every muscle and every step, suddenly they're like, this is way more difficult. Right. And if you have a low CO2 threshold, because you're you're a subpar breather and you've been breathing like that, and you right. put a mask on and you're still breathing like that, that is just gonna exacerbate that issue. Exactly, yeah. So when I put a mask on, I'm doing my best to breathe wide, keep everything relaxed, keep my posture up and I'll hum. When you hum, Humming generates 15 times more nitric oxide for your exactly. bloodstream. Yep. Nitric oxide is antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. All of those things are awesome. Mm -hmm. So as I'm breathing, I'm probably going to be doing this. Mm -hmm. 
nice and slow. One, and if you can hum deep into the ribs, you can help relax your body as you're moving along. So you've got this mild stressor on your face, but you're relaxing into it. Keep your posture up. Stay off your phone while you're doing it. And while you're walking around, keep your chin up. Like posture is so vital. If you have this thing on your face that's slightly stressing you out, and you're walking like this and you're looking at your phone, your posture is telling you to stress. Your breath is telling you to stress. And suddenly, this thing is just too much. And you take it off and you're like, oh, I feel better. But when they take it off, I watch people do this. And they fix their posture for a second. They take that nice, slow, deep breath. And this is where I would not say, you know, I'm not encouraging people to pick up smoking uh, at all. But smokers, they take breaks throughout their day. And the first thing a smoker does is this. <laughs> Copy that yeah. movement without, without a smoke. cigarette. Right. Yeah. And it, it's, they're slowing their breath down. They're taking right. time. They're checking in and they're giving themselves, I mean, not the best reason, mind you, mm -hmm. right. but that act of stopping multiple times a day and slowing their breath down. I'd like to point out to most smokers out there that that may be what you're right. searching for yep. is that, that calm, that release. And the nicotine may not be helping as much as you think in that, but it, it does slow people down. They're taking right. slower breaths. Yep. They're, they're removing themselves from whatever stress that they're in and they're taking that moment. So, you know, lie to your boss. I, I'm, I'm saying it, lie to your boss, tell them you're a smoker, go out and take a break. <laughs> and just breathe for the two right. minutes someone would be smoking. How about, uh, I, I've noticed this, I've talked to thousands of people as you can imagine. And and one thing that does come up and I've seen people do it. And if they're comfortable, I'll discuss it with them. A lot of us, because we're a little overweight or we have a beer belly, we tend, when we're coming into a room for the first time with people we haven't met, perhaps, this is more common than you think. And I, I'm hoping most people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, what's he going to go on with this? Holding your stomach in is actually going to make that moment of meeting new people a lot more stressful because, oh, I'll let you finish the sentence. Teenage girls are the worst at this because <laughs> they've been told to hold their stomach in. Right. For tone. Uh, yeah. But so I want everyone right now to not take a breath in, relax, <sighs> let a breath out. Now flex your stomach as tight as you can and take a breath in. Possible. Shallow. Super shallow. And that's 10%. going to drive your stress level up. Yep. It's going to make your, your right. diaphragm isn't going to move. Right. So what I would say is if you want to meet people for the first time and you want to give them a good impression. There we go. Don't be on your phone. This is this is the theater training coming in. Um, this is known as the peasant's posture mm -hmm. because the world just has you down. Yep. And if you come into a place looking at your phone, you're in the peasant's posture. So stop for a second. Lift your head up, sh ears over the shoulders, shoulders back, and you can just place your hands forward. Stand up straight. Hold the wide view, take a slow, deep breath in, expand the body, let it out nice and slow. Now you're ready to go meet people. Right. Keep this posture. That's people, what the king does. Yeah, that's the king's, king's pose. King's posture, yeah, the king's pose, yeah. I and, mean, and everyone wants to be the king. Yeah. So the first thing to do is to stand like, or queen. And act, you know? act like the king. Uh, another thing, another benefit of bulging out that's not the word but but ventilating properly i mean the diaphragm needs to is part of breathing but it's not it can't do its job if you're holding your stomach in the yeah. diaphragm doesn't necessarily it, it pumps like a cylinder right it comes up and down but for that to work you need to expand circumference you know completely around uh sides belly when that happens that's actually one of the best positions for elongating and and supporting your spine as well and keeping all the vertebrae in the right spot. So if you're lifting, make sure you're not holding your stomach in. Push out, fill up your lungs. This is a, I used to do a lot of judo. This is a common judo technique. You know, when you fall, when you fall, pressure. you want to let the air out, you know, but you know, when you're when you're working, you you want to you strengthen your your core by filling up that balloon. 
Right. So we can we can do that if if you expand laterally here and here. Now flex the stomach, you create the inner abdominal pressure and stabilize the spine and now you can lift. Yeah. Yeah. But now that proper movement of the diaphragm as we were talking about different biomes your diaphragm is one of the best tools you have for digestion. Mm -hmm. If it's just sitting up here due to a shallow breath and it's not moving very far, you're not pumping your gut. Mm -hmm. When you take that proper breath in, the diaphragm descends and everything is being pushed out because the diaphragm is pushing down. So think about that with every breath to help aid in digestion as the body moves. And as you exhale, you can even exhale a little further. <sighs> Bring the diaphragm up and then exercise your diaphragm. Right. Because it's not just about the inhale. Uh, people with anxiety, people with asthma, they'll say, I can't, I can't, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And they're full. What I tell them is exhale all the way. Let it out. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And now they can breathe. Right. So for those of you with like COPD, emphysema, asthma, um, practice that, that Anders Olsen exercise that's in breath where you exhale and you count down from five, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. And you're really pushing it out. And then you don't need to breathe in, just relax the throat and the negative pressure will allow your lungs to inflate. That's a great exercise for the diaphragm. It helps strengthen the core and mm -hmm. it helps stabilize the spine. Right. Um, it just makes you feel better. I mean, overall more confident, happier, uh, a little bit more chill. I mean, we, we all need that. Um, so what are the things let's, let's end with this. Uh, what are the things in our modern society, what three or four things do you think are contributing to our poor breathing habits? And again, w w most of us are not breathing properly, right? I mean, correct. what do you think the number is? I mean, yes, we know, we all know how to breathe, but very few of us know how to breathe properly and are breathing properly. Is it, what is that number? Do you think? I, I don't know. My guess is 95% yeah, okay. breathing improperly. Okay. I, I, I would like to say it's less, but my job is to teach people how to breathe properly. I've been mm -hmm. educated since I was 12 years old, which is mm -hmm. 32 years ago on proper breath for stage and biomechanics. Right. And I still catch myself breathing suboptimally pretty often. Right. So if, if I, so one, I want people out there to relax and know that you're not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. There are going to be times where you catch yourself breathing suboptimally. Yep. Take the time to fix your posture and just correct it and yep. give yourself a break there. But the top three things are our sedentary lifestyle. Okay. We use our chairs like stools yep. and we sit forward and we put like this. Most office people I see working like this. Right. Use your office chair. Like you can make it so it, it moves, you can find the right place right. where now I am fully yep. supported. I'm sitting back, my neck is supported, my jaw is supported. Right. I can pull myself closer and I can work just fine. So find that angle of lean that's good mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. um, Get up every 20 minutes, stretch, do a squat, mm -hmm. take a, a brisk walk, stand up desk, move it around a little bit, w wear shoes that let your feet spread out. Or don't wear shoes. Or, or don't wear working. shoes. Exactly. Um, I have my so desk sitting, go from sitting. Standing. How about sitting in a car? Sitting in a car. We do a again, lot of that. Sit back. Let the seat do its job. Some right. some designer or engineer spent hours, years, months to design the seat to hold you. So you don't want to be off the seat. Sit back and let the seat do its job. When your arms are out here, try and avoid this pose. Um, 10 and two is the worst place right, exactly. to have your hands. You right. want your hands at five and seven. Especially for an airbag as it goes off. Yeah, that, so beyond anything else, that's in my opinion, the most helpful advice any of us can ever get. Good to is know. If you're holding your car, mm -hmm. your, your steering wheel like this in the car and the airbag goes off, yep. you're up and in, but right. if it's down here, You've right. got more control, and yeah. then your arms, they go down into your lap. Right. A lot of so people will hang on the steering wheel at that 12 o'clock position, and that pulls them forward. You definitely so, want to be down low here, elbows bent. That gives you an upright posture. Don't sit upright in the car because that 
angle is bad for your back, lean back a little bit. Yeah, they call that the Italian driving position. Your knees are in your face, but you're way back. Because <laughs> that's it, the old cars but, used to be that way in Ferraris. Think about, think about your body as you're sitting forward. You're, mm -hmm. you're already compromising your rib cage, your diaphragm. Right. And strength. Not, it's constrained. So yep. sit back. Go for that, that posture. And I think the most... I really think the most nefarious thing out there that's that's screwing our breath up is our food. Okay, let's talk about that. Number three. Number three is yep. too soft food. Ah. Everything is hyper-processed. Mm -hmm. It's not allowing the jaw to shape correctly, uh, to form correctly. The jaw is mm -hmm. going to be the shape the jaw is going to be. Right. And the palate's not gonna form correctly. The muscles aren't gonna pull the jaw open and wide. It's, it's going to grow narrower and narrower the less we need to use it. So, I mean, there's there's the jaws or size thing, which is nice. But if you have TMJ, do not use that thing. Get the TMJ dealt with. If your teeth aren't aligned correctly, don't use that thing. But the jaws or size thing or anything you put in your mouth and like arr, 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 just work the jaw right. can help strengthen the jaw. There's a gum called Falim gum, F-A-L-I-M. Yep. That's a harder gum to chew. And you don't want to do these exercises so much that you're like, ow, my jaw hurts. You, you do it to the point where you feel it burn just a little bit and then you mm -hmm. stop. Right. But, but the processed food has set us back, not from the nutrient value. That's a whole different story. No. By it's texture and it's lack of fiber and texture. Absolutely. It, it causes the teeth to come in. It can cause, I'm not going to make any declarative statements. People will eviscerate me for this, but <laughs> I, I think like the softer foods, crooked teeth, like yep. if you, you can still go to cultures that eat a traditional oh, yeah. diet where they're eating harder foods and they're actually using their jaw, their teeth are fine. Well, they look different. Their teeth and are fine. They're not, they're their not airways maybe, bigger. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. They're not mouth breathing. They, yep. They've got healthier mouth biome. They've right. got better posture. Yep. Like there were, there were some cultures um, that didn't smile because it would let the, the, the breath of life escape. Yeah. So basically our culture, I, the fourth thing I would add is the way we speak. Interesting. Talk more about that. So nasal breathing is what I've been, you know, kind of cheerleading this whole time we've been talking. Mm -hmm. I've been doing my best and not getting a hundred percent. And I've noticed you've been doing a really good job of this as we've been speaking to breathe in through our nose. Yeah. As you speak and the sentence ends, try and breathe in through your nose. But if you notice most people when they talk, they're taking these fast breaths, Right. they're drying their mouth out. They're getting their body up tight. And you can see two people having a fun conversation at the end right. being like, I don't know why we're here. <laughs> and suddenly you, you've, you've all seen that person get into a presentation and suddenly at the end of the presentation, they're talking really, really fast and the, right. <laughs> their eyes are wide and they're like, I don't know True. why I'm, I'm here yes. panicked. Oh, it can be a dinner time conversation. Everyone's interrupting each other. They have to get a thought in their little sound bites. No one's listening. We all want to talk and we have mouth, we have food in our mouth. That's dangerous. Yeah. Speaking of so, airway obstruction. I would just say between your sentences or, or Steve Jobs a deep breath. made even if the question he knew the answer to, yes. he, someone would ask him a question he and, and pause. I admit it's, it's a bit assholery, but I'm for it. Yeah. Um, Dramatic. Pause, look, take a breath. And then he'd answer your question. Yep. It at least gives the illusion you're thinking about it. And if you're as impulsive as I am, I need yep. that illusion. Yep. Yep. Well, and it, it, in some cases it may be an illusion, but in his case, he may have really been thinking about the question. I mean, good listeners don't speak back right away. They don't reply right away. They try and figure out what it, what is the best way to answer this or what is that person trying to say? So I, I it seems dramatic, certainly in, in some circles, but I think it's a good practice. So I would force yourself to take a deep breath through your nose, exhale slowly before you say anything. It'll uh, it'll save you a lot of lot of. I have one question for you. Yes. Now, I hate this thing. I hate it too. This is my arch nemesis. Well, this in the walker. Yep. I hate walkers. Right. Uh, use trekking poles. Um, so I have been working with clients who are 20 years old mm -hmm. who've got a fatty growth on their neck mm -hmm. because since they were kids, mm -hmm. they've been doing this. Now, 
as that impacts the airway, I don't know what that's going to do to the mouth and the teeth. Mm -hmm. It's not good. A lot of kids I see who are like this, their teeth are discolored and they're no longer white and they're not drinking coffee. They're right. just discolored. But yep. that posture is so important to that. What if, have you seen a, a resurgence of younger people who come to you who can't reach that proper posture? Right. Because there's simply just a growth there on their neck yep. from standing suboptimally for yep. so long. Yeah, that, that posture where we're looking down at a phone. I mean, that that phone really forces us into that position. Our ancestors didn't do that. They didn't even read books. They were looking at the horizon. They were throwing a spear. They were talking to one another. Um, you know, some of it's okay, but I mean, let's face it. How, how many hours does a typical teen spend on TikTok? It, it's, it's scary. And that downward posture basically cr crinks your airway. Mm -hmm. It does overdevelop these muscles because you're supporting this 12 pound bowling ball in that awkward, not very efficient position. You want it to be centered over your spine and, you know, your, your vertical uh, stance. Um, but the open mouth, uh, the breathing, that shallow breathing that, I mean, we know there's a lot of anxiety with teenagers that, that are on social media. It's that's multifactorial. Why, that's yeah, that's one of yeah, the main reasons why. It's multifactorial. It's not just the the con the content. It's also the position we're in. It's the sitting on a couch, not active, snacking while eating. You know, poor snacks out of a bag. Uh, goldfish, it, lots of goldfish. You goldfish. want me to give them goldfish, right? There we go. Thank you for that plug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's yeah. I mean, it's terrible. Um, it, I mean, look at your watch your kids. Uh, that screen time needs to be limited. Uh, I think it's not going to come from some legislation from the government. It's got to come from the parents at home. Uh, I think delay giving your kid a phone as long as possible. I love those little flip phones just for a phone call, flip it up, put it in, you know, make sure your phone doesn't really texting is fine. I guess that's important, but big color screen, bad for the eyes, lots of blue light, the retina, retina quality screens. I mean, they're amazing. They are absolutely amazing. But it's it's bad on so many areas. Uh, I, I wonder what Steve Jobs would think today. He would have something to say about that. Even Steve Cook has been saying, you know what? Limit your time on the phone. Uh, the iOS has, you know, it built into its uh, software a, a feature where it tells you how much time you spend on certain apps. I think that's that's helpful. Most of us ignore that, of course. <laughs> but uh, but what would Steve Jobs say today about the iPhone? And if he knew, he's a, he was a smart guy. He would have seen the effect. He would have uh, tried to solve it probably with technology. Um, but, you know, who knows? Well, one of the easier ways we can solve this, and for all of you gentlemen out there, I am sorry. Mm -hmm. um, for, <laughs> for you guys, you have to do it a little differently. Yep. Is simply just hold your phone up right. as you're looking at it. Now, yep. if you're a guy, you really don't want those to be pointed at people. Um, yes, I know. I have been on my phone at a park right. with my kids and right. I got yelled at. So I have to hold it like this. Yep, that's a great idea. That's a great it's, idea. It's it's simply just holding it upright. Now, I can't stay looking at my phone like this for a very long time. Eventually, Which is a good thing. fatigue, and that's yep. a good thing. So this right. is self-imposed limits. Yep. And my kids' friends laugh because of all the dads, I'm the weird one. Like, you're pose. not going to mouth breathe in my house, and you're <laughs> not going to have poor posture. Like, right. if you want to come over, you're welcome to, but... I expect you to, you know, sit right. And they'll be like, this is weird. And when people come over and they're sitting right and they say that's weird, it shouldn't be weird. Right. <laughs> well, we it's spend a lot of time trying to elevate our laptop screens, our desktop screens. We get that ergonomic stance. The irony is that we spend more time on this device in this downward position than we do on the device that we've tried to optimize for you know, ergonomics and all that. And it's funny, humans are funny. You know, we, we, we have good intentions, but we don't, we don't seem to execute very, very well. So, um, you know, these are all important things. They all affect our health. Uh, I think awareness is key. I just want to end on one thing. Uh, one thing that I was really moved by uh, when I met you and James and, and the entire gang at, at the retreat uh, it made me, I mean, I knew breathing was important, but you really don't know how important something is until you actually experience it. And, you know, being in that beautiful room overlooking the ocean and, 
and uh, learning how to breathe. It took me a while, maybe the third or fourth day, I realized that, and I'm always thinking like this, it's just me. I mean, how the body's, how it's set up and how all these different systems are communicating and how complex the body is and how beautiful uh, and well-designed the body is um, in terms of the biomes and and how we interact with our environment. And it's very complicated and we know so little, but the conclusion I came to at some point, it was probably during one of the breathing sessions, is that you know the, the body is like this incredibly harmonic and beautiful sounding symphony with all the parts playing well together playing beautiful melodies and 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 but it wouldn't be that if it wasn't if the organism wasn't breathing properly and what is what what is breathing to the symphony orchestra it's the conductor mm -hmm. it's the symphony conductor the orchestra conductor and if that goes off, then you get cacophony and miss, you know, you know, uh, people aren't playing together. The, the, the elements of the system are not playing well together. So it's kind of at a higher level than all these other hormonal neurological systems. Breathing is not to be underestimated. It is a big player in overall health, certainly in oral health. And so that gave me a lot of newfound appreciation for it. Uh, I, even before I knew about breathing, I had a technique. If I was a little anxious before going to bed, this was 30, 40 years ago, I would I could hear my heartbeat at night and I would just think, oh, I don't like that. That's uncomfortable. I want to, I want that. I, I don't want to hear it and feel it. So I changed my breathing. This was as a young teen. And I don't know what prompted me to do that. But now, of course, it's more formal. I know the science behind it. This is something that's good, not just for oral health. Uh, being able to nose breathe is so important for oral health, certainly indirectly, actually directly for systemic health as well. Um, but it goes beyond that overall happiness and and our time here on this planet being happy and productive and, and being being nice to our neighbor, because we're we're a better person for it. So uh, anything else you want to end on, Chuck, and then also, after that, tell us how um, our, our viewers and listeners can can find you. I, I know you get you're very generous with your with what you do, you give away a lot of information. Tell us about that as well. But anything you want to add first, and then where, where do we, where can we find you? I'm stealing the conductor analogy. That is okay. amazing. Oh, good. Thanks. He, the, the conductor does set the rhythm and totally. the tone. It sets everything up for failure or success. And it's that's the one of the few things that, with just a little bit of conscious intervention, you can mm -hmm. change and control. Yes. It's pretty so, simple to do. Just well, one box breathing session. Can I, get I will you preface it that simple is not easy. Right. Okay. So, so it may be simple, but you have to do it. Right. I can't breathe for you. Well, I can, but that's called CPR, and we've gone way <laughs> sideways if that's happening. Could so, be painful. So, could be painful. Don't I wouldn't do that. want you cracking my sternum. <laughs> I will break your ribs. Um, so, just check in. Be honest with how you're feeling. Right. Allow your breath to slow down. Pump the brakes a little bit. And then with the tools breathwork can provide, step into the state you'd like to be in. You don't always have to be calm and neutral. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of athletic teams before a game, they're going, yeah, yeah. And they're all getting pumped up and psyched up. That's really helpful. But that is intentional excitement right. rather than unintentional yep. excitement. Right. Um, just be aware of what intention you may be setting in your body yep. through your breath. Right. And if you'd like to find me, uh, you can go to my website, Iced Viking Breathworks, or for those of you who don't want to type that out, uh, IVBW.com. Uh, every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific and every Monday night at 9 p.m. Pacific, I do a free breathwork session. I'll put that uh, in the show notes. Yep. All of the all of the breathwork is free. Um, there's a Q&A before and after that everyone is invited to. Um, I've been Zoom bombed a lot. Some of my <laughs> best clients were actually past zoom bombers because they're invited to stay right, i just right. mute them and turn them off right but come breathe with us find a group to help keep you a little bit accountable yeah and if you need recordings i will give you recordings to breathe to so it, and the last thing i'll say is a breath breath work i want people to destroy the idea that breath work is a 15 or 20 minute session mm-hmm or maybe a two hour long holotropic <laughs> breathwork session. That is a form of breathwork. Right. But simply bringing your awareness to your breath, slowing it down and changing your posture is breathwork. If you'd like to be embodied as you're walking around, 
Keep the posture up and take four steps on a nasal inhale and four steps on a nasal exhale. That's a great idea. And just feel the way the body moves as you breathe. And as for biomechanics, I don't want you just to be able to be breathing correctly while laying down. I want you to be breathing correctly, sitting down, mm -hmm. standing up and moving. All right. of those things are important because I'll notice people when they start to walk, suddenly they're just leading with their head. Don't do that. Yep. Stand up straight. And really, one of the most helpful things I can say is go to an elocution class or a manners class from the 20s. Get rid of all the sexist garbage they're going to tell you, but they had people walk upright yeah. with books on their head. Right, right. They had people walk around the room with a mouthful of water. Right. So their mouth was closed. So their mouth was closed. Yep. Good point. Regardless of the sexism or, or whatever you're going to see, just those lessons they're teaching... Mm -hmm. I'm sad aren't being taught anymore in schools. Like I agree. How to stand up correctly, how to hold the posture correctly. Right. And, and a lot of it was not really taught with the best of intentions, no. but the lessons are still good. So even right. if you don't like the intention, keep the lesson. Exactly. No. I encourage everyone to partake in some of those courses. As Chuck said, it really keeps you accountable. Uh, that's This is a habit that you have to learn. And it's nice to have someone that holds you accountable in a gentle way, of course. Uh, and just by knowing that at 11 o'clock, um, you know, or at whatever time, uh, Sunday is Sunday is Sunday is 11 a.m. I always mean, start 15 minutes early just to answer right. questions. That's great. And we'll stay the whole hour. The breath work starts at five after the hour. Right. You can leave your video off. You can leave exactly. your microphone off. You don't have to ask any questions, but you yeah. will gain benefit from the people who do. Yeah, I think just hearing Chuck's voice once a week will will help all of you. Uh, I think uh, it, that's what helped us. And so again, Chuck, thank you so much for your time and for everything that you give. And uh, and I look forward to speaking with you more and seeing you again in person. That would be great. But um, I, I'm glad we have people that are so knowledgeable about, about breathing. Again, as I said, breathing is kind of the big umbrella when it comes to health and it, it we, we just we always go for like the liver or for blood pressure or how to optimize this and that and we forget about the the big picture and and uh, you certainly haven't forgotten about it so again thanks for your time and uh is thank there you. an instagram site or a website uh, that you have i think you I mentioned spiking it. breathworks okay that's right i'll put all that in the show notes thanks chuck have a great day thanks everybody